Okay, we're back and we are continuing in uh, chapters. Let's see, chapters or sections, I guess we've been calling them sections. 5.1, 5.2, we've been dealing with shear stress, which is T rho over J. I'm along any, uh, the radial length, and then we have the maximum is TC over J, and remember this is our radius, okay? So we have a solid aluminum shaft that has a diameter of 50 millimeters and an allowable shear stress of 60 megapascal. Determine the largest torque T1 that can be applied to the shaft if it is also subjected to the other torsional loadings. It is required that T1 act in the direction shown. Okay, so um, normally if we wanted to find the largest, then we might need to walk ourselves back while T1 doesn't affect A to B. That's that 900 but T1 does affect B to C, C to D, and D to E. But I'm noticing that both A, C, and D all come towards me, and this one is going towards the back, and it has to go in that direction, which means the highest value um, is going to have to be between B to C, because this is going to continue to, to decrease it because these are going in the opposite direction. So I know that the maximum is going to occur from B to C. So I am going to have to um, draw free body diagrams. And if I want to find the shear stress within all the other regions, it's going to be cut free body diagram, find internal torque, cut free body diagram, figure out what T1 can be cut. Because now we know T1, um, figure out the torque, figure out torque. So we're going to have four free body diagrams. We're also going to draw a, a, shear, a shear force diagram and a shear stress diagram. And we're going to start with that if the diameter is 50 millimeters, then I know that my radius, which is C, is 0 0.025 meters. And I have an allowable shear stress of 60 megapascals, which is times 10 to the 6th Newton per meter squared, because that's what a pascal is. And we want to determine that largest T and then et cetera, et cetera. So let's just go ahead and work backwards like we would if we knew T1. And we're going to start here. So if I'm starting from A to B, remember we can take our post-it note and we can cover everything to the left or everything to the right, okay? I'm either going to have all of this, which means I need a reaction, or we can just do this. So let's just go ahead and cut, and we are going to have, okay, so I have this is applied, 900 Newton meters. And when I'm going in the back, I always assume positive, so if I stick my hand up to the butt of, so like say I've cut it, okay, I've cut it, Here's the 900 coming around. The internal going to the back is going to be considered positive. Okay, going in that direction. So that's going to be the internal torque of A to B. So I have it drawn correctly in terms of positive behavior. And now we're going to sum torques. And this is where it gets kind of weird. But we're going to just use right hand rule all the way backwards. And it has to equal zero. So we're going to start here. And I have 900 Newton meters. Okay, that's negative now according to what I'm calling positive as coming towards me is positive. So TAB equals zero. So I found that the torque in AB equals 900 Newton meters. And I got a positive value. So that means we would have a positive uh, angle of twist. So now we're going to solve, um, we're going to do our next free body diagram. And again, we have to cut between B and C. So let's draw our free body diagram. And I have 900 Newton meters. I have this unknown torque, which it has to go that direction. And I have a positive, I'm gonna assume positive, TBC, okay? But I can look at this, okay? I can look at this and know that in order to balance this out, I'm probably gonna have to be coming towards me, which is negative, but we'll get there, okay? So now we're gonna sum our torques. We're going to use positive coming towards us. So I have 900 Newton meters minus T1 minus TBC equals zero. So I now know that the torque in member BC, take that over, has to equal 900 Newton meters minus T1. Okay, so T1 is probably going to be much larger than 900 if we're going to end up with uh, 
the largest shear stress within there. Okay, so that is my torque BC. It's 900 minus T1. And in order to find that stress or to find that torque, I have this shear stress that's allowed. So if I know that shear stress equals T rho over J and maximum uh, occurs when rho equals C, then let's find that out. So I have 60 times 10 to the sixth Newton per meter squared equals, well, the torque of BC is 900 Newton meters minus T1. Okay, uh, our radius, 0 0.025 meters, divided by pi over 2, 0.025 meters to the fourth. Okay, so now we're going to get our little calculator out, and we're going to go back and calculate. So we have 60 e to the sixth enter, pi as a number, 2 divided by 0 0.025 enter to the fourth times... And now we're going to multiply, so we have times, and I get this, let's check it again, 60 e to the 6th enter, pi over 2, 0 0.025 enter to the 4th, times, times, and then we're going to divide through by 0 0.025 because I know that 900 minus T1 equals the torque in BC. So that's actually going to be what we draw on our, on our diagram. So now let's divide through. And I get that 1472.62 equals 900 Newton meters minus T1. So this right here has to equal the torque in BC. Okay, the torque in BC. And um, it looks like it's positive. Okay, it looks like it's positive. Um, so let's just look at this picture and see is that going to be positive or negative. So if we have our picture here and we want the maximum, if this is 900, then whatever T1 is, okay, we have to end up getting, we have to end up getting so that we have 1472. Well, it can't be positive like in this direction that we had up here because then that it's not going to be balanced out. So we have that TBC equals 1472.62 Newton meters. Okay. Newton meters, which is a negative value. And so T1 has to equal, what does T1 have to equal? So this is, uh, we can look in here, if this is 1472 in this direction, and this is 900 in this direction, then T1 has to equal 900 plus 1472. So let's add 900 to that. And we get 23 23, 72.62 Newton meters. So if we have 900 going in this direction and we have 1472 going in this direction, then T1 can be 2372 Newton meters going to the back. Okay, going to the back. And how can we check this? Well, we can go back through and we can say 900. Okay, 900 minus 2372 is negative 1472. So this has to be coming back as we're going through. And we can see that that is actually a negative value. Okay. So we have our first answer. T1 equals 2372. So now we need to go back and figure out the how that affects between C and D. So we have 900, we have 2370, let's just call it three. We have 600, and we can visually look at this if we want to, and we can calculate that the torque in CD has to equal 900, okay, 2373 minus. 600 plus, and we get eight, negative 873 Newton meters, which we know it's negative because it's coming back towards us, and right-hand rule says it has to be going away from us. 
um, we'll do the last one. We'll actually set it back up with statics again. So we've got a cut. We've got to draw a free body diagram. And I have 900. I have 2373. I have 600. And then we have 300. And we are going to assume this is positive. Uh, tension, or not tension, torque DE. And we're going to sum those torques. We're going to call that direction positive. So we have 900 minus 2373 plus 600 plus 300 minus TDE equals zero. So TDE has to equal, take that negative over, 900 enter 2373 plus 600 plus 300 plus, and I get negative 573 newton meters that's the torque between d to e so now if i were to draw this out i have newton meters and here we have b c d so the torques we have positive 900 okay then we have this internal torque of 1472 which is negative So positive, negative. Then we have this internal of, where do we have that? 873, that's also negative. And then we have 573, which is also negative. And how could I check this? I could go back and add all the way, just like we, just like we did, but we could go back. And then this is gonna be the value of our reaction, because we know it's really stuck to the wall, it has to have a reaction. So then if I wanted to draw shear stress, okay, so this is torque, which is in Newton meters. This is going to be Newton per meter squared. I know that my shear stress is going to be a positive shear stress, a negative shear stress, a negative shear stress, a negative shear stress. And just remember, shear stress equals T rho over J. So in this case, it's going to be whatever that torque was, 0 0.025 pi over 4, 0 0.025 to the fourth, and so we could actually calculate each of these values. And again, positive shear stress, negative shear stress, negative shear stress, negative shear stress. And that's gonna be super important as we start looking for, excuse me, our angles of, uh, our angles of twist. Um, it will be, be super, super important. Okay, there you have it.